Can you believe a kid with no money created one of the world's most luxurious car brands? This story is so wild, you won't find these facts in any history textbook. And as a curious mind, I spent weeks digging through old newspapers and rare biographies to uncover them. You won't believe some of the things I discovered. How did a little boy with no money become a world famous inventor? Let's find out. Most success stories start with some kind of advantage, but Henry Royce entered the world in 1863 with almost nothing. His family lived in a small village called Allalton, UK, and let's just say they went vacationing on the French Riviera. His father ran a flour mill, barely scraping by. Henry's early years filled with hard work, setbacks, and a hunger to create something extraordinary. He was put to work as early as age 9 to help support his family. Imagine being a kid selling newspapers and delivering telegrams to survive. But even then, Henry's mind was obsessed with anything mechanical, gears, engines, and how machines were built. He would often take broken gadgets apart just to try and rebuild them better. You see, Henry didn't have the luxury of a fancy education. In fact, he only finished one year of formal schooling, but a stroke of luck came when his aunt saw his potential. She helped him secure an apprenticeship at a great northern railway company at age 15. This meant hard labor, long hours, typical factory stuff back then. But for Henry, it was like getting accepted into Harvard. Finally, he could learn the inner workings of powerful machines. But even then, Henry wasn't content to just follow instructions. Nights were spent poring over technical books on engineering and electricity, pushing his knowledge to the limit. And this determination paid off. In 1884, with 20 pounds of savings, he entered a partnership with Ernest Clermont, a friend who contributed 50 pounds to open his own electrical engineering company in Cook Street, Manchester. This company was called F.H. Royce & Company. But they weren't building fancy gadgets. They made doorbells, light bulbs, the basic electronic stuff. And then something happened. Henry Royce became obsessed with one word. Perfection. He wasn't just cranking out products. He wanted to build the best on the market. Soon, his electrical parts developed a reputation for incredible quality. But Henry wasn't a light bulb guy at heart. His ambition and mind was calling him towards a machine that would change the world, the automobile. But did he have what it took to reinvent the car? I guess we'll find out soon. Henry Royce was on a relentless quest for automotive perfection. But remember, he was a self-made engineer. And as brilliant as he was, he wasn't some big shot businessman. To bring his dream cars to life, he needed something more. Connections, funding, and a way to reach the wealthy elite who could afford such luxury. And that's where this man, Charles Rose, comes in. Born in 1877, Rose was about as different from Henry as he could get. Rose came from money, London High Society, the whole nine yards. He went to fancy schools like Trinity College, Cambridge, and had a passion for speed. Rose wasn't just rich, he was one of the first people in England to even own a car. Fate brought these two unlikely partners together in 1904 at the Midland Hotel in Manchester. It was arranged by a mutual friend, Henry Edmonds. Rose was blown away by Henry's quiet genius and the incredible quality of his early cars. And for Henry, well, he saw Rose as his ticket to the big leagues the way to get his creations into the hands of the rich and powerful. You see, Henry Royce had already made a name for himself in electrical engineering, but something wasn't right. His company was facing stiff competition after the Boer War, and cheap imports were flooding the market. That's when Royce's passion for machines led him to buy a few foreign luxury cars, a De Dion and a Decoville. But even those didn't live up to his impossible standards. So like any true genius, he decided, fine, I'll build a better car myself. And that he did. 
Right there in the workshop, Royce engineered his first Rolls Royce. Well, technically it was just a Royce at the time. He built three in total, each with a smooth two-cylinder engine. One was sold to a friend, Henry Edmonds, whose connections proved crucial. Edmonds was buddies with Charles Rolls, the wealthy car enthusiast, and you better believe he showed off Royce's creation. Edmonds set up the meeting in 1904, and the rest is history. This partnership was a stroke of brilliance. Rose brought the business savvy connections and that aristocratic flair that screamed luxury. Royce was the engineering mastermind who wouldn't compromise on a single detail, and boy did his obsession with perfection pay off. By 1907, just a few years after their first car, Rolls Royce was already winning awards for their engineering excellence. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's rewind to that first car. Their debut car, the Rolls Royce 10 HP, was unveiled in 1904 at the Paris Salon. This car was a marvel of engineering for its time. Its engine was smooth, almost silent, a shocking change from the noisy contraptions on the road back then. As a matter of fact, Rolls-Royce cars are so intricate, each one takes six months to build by hand. And with such limited production, what they went on to do next will shock you. Rolls-Royce wasn't content with just making expensive cars. They aimed to create something truly legendary, a standard that all others would strive to reach. And they achieved it with a car that became a symbol of their mastery, the Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. Unveiled in 1906, this car was in a league of its own. Publications hailed it as the best car in the world. And that wasn't just hype. So, what made the Silver Ghost so special? But before we answer that question, there's something you need to understand. Rolls-Royce was all about unwavering obsession with perfection. An obsession so intense that not even a near-death experience could stop Henry Royce. His relentless work ethic and poor eating habits nearly ended his career in 1911. Doctors gave him mere months to leave, but Royce defied death itself, returning to work fueled by pure determination. And though his illness forced him to work remotely, not even that could dim his passion for perfection. Every single design had to pass his scrutiny. Engineers would trek to his home, nervously presenting their work to the legendary Mr. Royce. And if it wasn't perfect, it went back to the drawing board. Just like our modern day Frank Gehry. But you see, it was this unyielding standard that made a Rolls Royce special. Now back to the Silver Ghost. Rolls-Royce orchestrated an insane endurance test in 1907. They drove a Silver Ghost over 15,000 miles non-stop, the equivalent of circling half the globe today. It was like a very long Formula 1 trip. Mechanics checked and replaced parts along the way, just like a race car pit stop. The goal was to prove that a Rolls-Royce wouldn't let you down, even under extreme conditions. But it didn't stop there. In 1907, they took demonstration of quality to the next level with a publicity stunt that seems crazy by today's standards. You see, the Silver Ghost engine was so smooth and quiet that you could balance a cup of water on it while it was running. No spills. This visual became iconic, showing that Rolls Royce wasn't just about power but about a level of refinement that felt magical. And of course, luxury isn't just about how the car runs, it's the whole experience. Inside a Rolls Royce, every detail was a masterclass in craftsmanship. The finest leathers, polished wood, intricate metal work, it was more like a palace on wheels than a car. And forget about lines, each Rolls Royce was painstakingly built by hand by skilled artisans. This dedication to quality is what sets Rolls Royce apart even from other luxury car makers. It's this obsession, this refusal to compromise that puts them atop the automotive world. But success can bring its own challenges. With rivals constantly innovating, could Rolls Royce stay ahead of the curve or would their dedication to tradition become a weakness? The 
Rolls Royce story isn't all smooth sailing and champagne. They faced hardships, setbacks that could have destroyed a lesser company. In 1910, something devastating happened. Remember Charles Rolls, the adventurous businessman who helped launch the brand? Well, Rolls had a passion for a new thrilling invention at that time, airplanes. Sadly, he became one of Britain's first aviation casualties, dying in a plane crash at just 32 years old. This was a devastating blow, and it was a question of if Rolls-Royce could survive without one of its visionary founders. Luckily, Henry Royce was undeterred, but his focus had to shift. By 1914, World War I was looming, and the British Army desperately needed reliable aircraft engines. Royce rose to the challenge, channeling his genius into a whole new realm. His team designed the legendary Rolls-Royce Eagle engine, a powerhouse that helped the Allies stick to the skies. This move made Rolls-Royce so vital to the war effort. But the innovation didn't stop in the skies. Even as he battled illness, Henry Royce remained focused on improving their cars. In true Rolls-Royce fashion, it was about the driving experience itself. You see, Royce recognized a problem. Fast cars on rough roads provided an uncomfortable ride, and on the eve of his passing in 1933, inspiration struck. Legend has it that he sketched a design for adjustable shock absorbers on the back of an envelope. This was the birth of the adjustable shock absorber, allowing drivers to fine-tune their cars based on speed and road conditions. But what happens when the war ends and the legendary inventor is gone? Well. Rolls-Royce's reputation for engineering excellence was stronger than ever. The world had changed, but the desire for luxury and innovation hadn't. Their cars continued to be the pinnacle of status, a symbol of wealth and success. And though the founders are long gone, that image remains remarkably strong even today. Rolls-Royce is more than just a car, it's an icon. But with the automotive world shifting, electric cars, Environmental concerns, what does this mean for a brand so deeply rooted in tradition? Some argue whether a Rolls Royce can stay relevant in the face of these changes. Others point to their focus on individualization and customization, saying that's the key to meeting new demands without losing their core identity. But only time will tell if Rolls Royce can remain the king of luxury. Remember that little boy selling newspapers on the streets of London? Henry Royce grew up to engineer some of the world's most incredible machines. It wasn't handed to him. Royce's journey from rags to riches was fueled by pure greed and an obsession with perfection. Through hard times, relentless determination, and even when his health was failing, he never stopped pushing the boundaries of what was possible. So. Whether you're a curious mind, an entrepreneur, or just someone who dreams of making a difference, the story of Henry Royce is your story. It proves that talent and perseverance can overcome any obstacle. If a boy born into poverty could create an icon like Rolls Royce, imagine what we might achieve if we set our minds to it. If this story inspired you, let me know in the comments. And if you want to hear more insightful stories about brilliant minds who changed the world, be sure to subscribe.